In this screencast we're going to look at the two main ascending sensory pathways of the spine. We're going to look at the spinothalamic tract and we're going to look at the dorsal column pathway. Now before we do that we just need to quickly sketch out the main structures that are involved in these pathways. So first of all let's have the somatosensory cortex on the post central gyri. So here we have the left post central gyri and on there we have the somatosensory cortex and obviously here we've got the right hand side. This is if we've made a coronal section through the cerebral hemispheres. And remember that the information that's going towards the somatosensory cortex is somatotopic. So we have regions of the body that are mapped onto the post-central gyrus. So here, on the more medial surface, we have the foot. And then as we go laterally, we have the leg, we have the arm, and we have the hand. Okay, And obviously that's going to be on the right-hand side as well as on the left-hand side. We also then need to draw the important relay nuclei the two phalami, so here we have one here and we have one here. Remember in life these are separated via the third ventricle. We then need to draw an imaginary midline, so here we've got an imaginary midline and then we've got the lateral border of the spinal cord and towards the thalamus the brain stem. So here's the lateral border of the spinal cord. We can also add on to here um, T6, so this is the approximate level of T6, so we'll just draw that, we can come back to it later on, and don't forget these are your phalami here and here. We just need to really draw one structure of the brain stem, and that's the level of the closed medulla, and at the level of the closed medulla, on the dorsal surface of the brain stem, brain stem we have those two pairs of tubercles, we have the gracile and the cuneate tubercle. So we'll just draw these in. And remember, within the tubercles, we have the gracile and the cuneate nuclei. So we'll just draw these two pairs of nuclei here. Remember, we have the cuneate nuclei medially and the gracile nuclei laterally. So we'll just draw these in. OK, so now let's start by looking at the spinothalamic pathway. Remember the spinothalamic pathway is important in relaying pain and temperature, some crude touch sensation from sensory receptors on the skin to the central nervous system. So let's draw one of these fibres coming in. We can see the fibre coming in here. Here's the cell body of that primary neuron and it's the cell body sitting in the dorsal root ganglion. This neuron then extends towards the central nervous system. It passes through the dorsal rootlet, and it will form a synapse in the dorsal grey horn. So here we can draw the synapse of this primary neuron with a secondary neuron. And here's the cell body of the secondary neuron. Remember that for both the spinothalamic and the dorsal column pathway, it takes three neurons to get from the sensory receptor to the somatosensory cortex. So this is going to be our primary neuron of the spinothalamic tract, STT, spinothalamic tract. Primary neuron passed into the central nervous system, into the spinal cord, and it gives a synapse, it forms a synapse with a secondary neuron in the dorsal grey horn of the spinal cord. Now this secondary neuron then crosses the midline. So now let's draw this secondary neuron crossing the midline at approximately the level it entered into the cord. This primary neuron may in fact pass in and then go up the cord a couple of segments before synapsing. But in principle the spinothalamic enters the spinal cord and it crosses over. Once it's crossed over, it then ascends up the spinal cord within the spinothalamic tract until it gets to the thalamus. At the thalamus, specifically the ventroposterolateral nucleus of the thalamus, 
it forms a synapse with the third neuron in this chain. So here's the synapse with the cell body of the third neuron, and then it's going to project to the somatosensory cortex within the postcentral gyrus. Now because this neuron's come from below six, it's typically going to go to the leg, the lower torso region of the somatosensory cortex. So there's a spinothalamic tract, three neuron chain from sensory receptor to somatosensory cortex. So let's just quickly draw in the spinothalamic tract on this right hand side. We've got the cell body in the dorsal root ganglion, passes into the spinal cord via the dorsal rootlet where it synapses with a secondary neuron in the dorsal grey horn and this neuron crosses the midline and then ascends the spinal cord towards the thalamus. It forms a synapse with the tertiary, the third neuron in the three neuron chain which then projects to the somatosensory cortex. So here we have the left and the right side of the spinal cord receiving the spinothalamic tracts. If we then turn to the dorsal column pathway, I'll do this one in red, then here again dorsal column pathway, DCP, then it's important that we remember this T6 region of the spinal cord. So if we draw a uh, neuron coming in, a sensory neuron coming in, gives off a dorsal root ganglion, a cell body within the dorsal root ganglion. This neuron, if it's coming from below T6, will enter the spinal cord and travel quite medially to join what's known as the gracile fascicle. This neuron doesn't cross the midline at the level of the spinal cord. This primary neuron enters the spinal cord and then because it's come from below T6 it ascends in the gracile fascicle until it gets to the gracile nucleus where it forms a synapse with the secondary neuron here. This secondary neuron now at the level of the closed medulla is going to cross the midline and go to the thalamus. So here we can see it now going to the ventra posterolateral nucleus of the thalamus where it forms a synapse with a tertiary neuron. Now because this has come from below T6 it's going again to go to the lower limb foot lower torso region of the somatosensory cortex. If we drew a neuron coming in from above T6 cell body and dorsal root ganglion passing in via dorsal rootlets it then runs more laterally in the cuneate fascicle. It then ascends the cord to the cuneate nuclei where it then forms a synapse with a secondary neuron. This secondary neuron crosses the midline towards the thalamus. Here it forms a synapse with a tertiary neuron and this tertiary neuron is then going to project to the somatosensory cortex. It's come from above T6 so typically it will go to the upper torso, the arm or the hand region. And here we have the dorsal column pathway in red from the left hand side. So it's important to remember spinothalamic cross at the level of the spinal cord, dorsal column cross at the level of the closed medulla. If we then try and see why this is important we can use a case study so here we've got a young woman arrives in A&E with a wound to her lower back where she's fallen on a metal railing. You suspect she may have a lesion of her spinal cord. In addition to severe motor deficits, she has the following neurological symptoms. So proprioception and two-point discriminatory touch sense was lost over the lower part of her right torso and right lower limb. These sensations were, however, intact over the remainder of her body. Now immediately you should be thinking proprioception, two-point discriminatory touch, dorsal column pathway. And you should also remember dorsal columns don't cross at the level of the spinal cord. Then we've got finding two. 
analgesia, so they couldn't feel pain, and thermoanesthesia, so couldn't feel changes in temperature, were present over the left lower limb and left lower torso. But she could feel pain and could feel temperature over the remainder of her body. So her spinothalamic fibres were damaged here. Remember, spinothalamic is carrying pain and temperature. So now let's draw these out onto our previous image. Let's draw out an image of a person, quite a crude image. So we've got the head here, we've got some arms, we've got some legs, we've got the trunk and the other arm here. And remember, it was the right side, lower limb, lower torso, and left side, lower limb, lower torso. So let's just separate the lower limb from the lower torso from the upper torso, and let's divide our two limbs. There we go. So we've got a right, lower limb, lower torso. We've got a left, lower limb, lower torso. And now let's just draw on here which regions, which tracks would be damaged in which region. So the right lower limb, lower torso, it was dorsal column that was damaged. So let's just shade this in red. And over on the left hand side, it was the spinothalamic information that was damaged. So this person wasn't getting proprioception and discriminatory touch from this side. And from this side, they weren't getting pain and temperature. Let's also include right and left, just so we're clear with what we're doing. We've got the right side of the person here, and we've got the left side here. So for this to be damaged, for this outcome to have occurred, there needs to have been a lesion, a hemi section of the cord. And we need to work out if it's on the left or if it's on the right side. Now for completion, we're going to need to complicate the diagram a bit more and quickly draw in the dorsal column pathway over on this right hand side. So let's just quickly draw that in from below T6, it enters, it ascends, forms a synapse, this crosses the midline and goes to the somatosensory cortex. Above T6, it enters the cord, it ascends, forms a synapse at the cuneate nucleus. Here's the synapse with the secondary neuron. This crosses the cord, crosses the midline, sorry, to the thalamus, where it forms a synapse with a tertiary neuron, and this tertiary neuron takes it to the somatosensory cortex. So, we have damage to the dorsal column pathway on the right hand side. Here's the right hand side of the cord and here we've got dorsal column information. So if the spinal cord was damaged here then we'd damage these fibres and we'd damage these fibres potentially. But we know it's only the lower torso so it's probably down below T6. So this fibre here has to be damaged because this is bringing in dorsal column information, proprioception, discriminative touch from the right hand side and we know this is damaged. It couldn't be this side because this is coming in from the left hand side. If we now look at the spinothalamic we can see that it's the left hand lower torso and limb that has got this sensory deficit and we know that spinothalamic taking information from this left hand side comes into the cord and crosses over. So it makes sense if the lesion occurred somewhere around here. So here is the hemisected spinal cord lesion. It means we're losing dorsal column information on the right side and it also means we're losing spinothalamic information from the left side and that gives us our overall picture here.